And Nena Cherry joins us now. Hello. That takes us Good all morning. back. <laughs> but my goodness, you look amazing, by the way. Oh, I don't know about that. You might oh, need you to put great. your <laughs> goggles on. <laughs> you, look, you look great. It's, <laughs> it's a you. lovely album and it's got some Thanks. superstars on it, hasn't it? I was just looking at all the, the covers and interpretations of your work. Manchild, one of my favourite, favourite records, is covered by Sia. Yeah. You've known Sia for a long time. Sia used to actually hang out in my house. Um, <laughs> like in the 90s, we lived in Camden. My husband Cameron was working with her, kind of mentoring her. She had a band here. And she just ended up like kind of joining the family and kind of looking after my kids sometimes. And actually she was going through some, some hardships and so you and took her in, I feel like, yeah, like I think we were, we sort of had her back, mm -hmm. but it's just like I couldn't believe when she agreed Brilliant. to do it because obviously she's like a huge mega star nowadays. And, <laughs> and your like, your wow. daughter is a huge mega star nowadays. Isn't My she? daughter Mabel, Mabel, I'll be talking yeah. about. I have three daughters, but Mabel is a yeah. She's and your like other conquering. daughter is singing on the uh, yeah. Tyson is yeah. singing. Um, a track called Sassy on the record. But yeah, Mabel is out there conquering. So that's Mabel and Tyson. How, can I ask how old they are? They, uh, Mabel is 26, mm -hmm. Tyson is 30, early 30 somewhere. And do you think 31. That, you and think... then I have one more daughter. You do. Who's about to turn, she'd probably hate me if she <laughs> thought I was saying, but she's about to turn 40. Oh, does she sing as well? She plays the piano. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah. what do you think? I was going to ask you this in terms of musicianships, whether it's singing or tinkling the ivories. Is that, do you think, genetic or is it something <laughs> that they've picked up from you behaviourally, you know? I mean, I think that it, it kind of does resonate in your DNA. I yeah. think if you grow up around music and like in the kind of way that, I mean, I did and in the way that my kids have, I think it definitely gets under your skin but then as a family like we've never been the kind of parents me and my husband that are like you have to do this or mm. you know we want you to like be in the music business I mean I would never but I think it is genetic you see I've, I've got a friend who sings in the Royal Chorus mm. and uh, her little boy could sight read music before he could read yeah. words he could, he could interpret I mean and for sing. sure I mean there are some people that are just less yeah. With genius. And I mean, I think as a, as a mother and as a parent, I've just wanted my kids to be able to, you know, harness their creativity and to kind of be able George, to hopefully find their own voices. George Michael, who of course had the most incredible voice, he used to refer to it in conversation and he wasn't being self-aggrandizing, he used to refer to it as my gift because yeah. he saw it as a gift, something that he'd been it born is. with rather than he'd had to sort of work for. And it's something you nurture and you have to graft, yeah. you know, to, to, for that gift to grow. What was it like watching Mabel taking part in the Jubilee concert? <laughs> I have to say, I think that concert was one of the best I have ever yeah, yeah, seen. Really yeah. And she was great. Actually, I, <laughs> I was at home, I couldn't go, because obviously there, it was quite strict on like who could go get in and not, uh, or um, who could get in. But I was really nervous <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because I mean, I knew that she would do great, but of course there are just like lots of little crazy things that could go wrong and being live on television in front of like... But Susanna's right, world. isn't she? It was an incredible concert. Yeah, I, I can't remember seeing anything as good as that. She that must live. have been absolutely oh, I couldn't do that. buzzing I'd afterwards. I literally <laughs> died. It's brilliant. <laughs> did so well. One of your contemporaries, Robbie Williams, uh, who was around, you know, 1990s, like I have to explain mm. to anyone who Robbie Williams is, <laughs> but just to explain, it was around the same time when, when he became famous. Uh, recently said that fame uh, should come with a health warning. Mm -hmm. um, and I wonder if you felt that. I mean, obviously, you're, you know, you, your whole family's involved in music, but, but do I you think see so. what he means? I, I think so, because I think that, of course, you, if you're sitting in the, in the, in the kind of bylines, you're going to, or... You can, there's nothing they can prepare you for, I no. guess is what I'm trying to say. Like, mm. And of course, you know, if you're just sort of dreaming of, yeah, like a, when I get famous, you know, everything's going to be fine, everything's going to be great. I mean, of course, there's a, a big privilege mm. to being able to like create your life and live mm. off the thing that you want to do. Yeah. But 
it, it is harsh out there. And I think that there's definitely not enough space and attention giving to, you know, the, the flip the side. sort of, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, to the flip side and to um, the mental health and well-being mm. well being because well you just, on. especially now with social media and stuff, it's like oh, a 24 well, yeah. seven yeah. thing. I mean, when I sort of came up, you could go home and shut the doors. And I think it's very much also about like, who you surround yourself with and Absolutely who your right. family and, and people are. Well, you look very centred to us. Great to see you. To Thank see you. you. Thanks for having me. Nana Cherry, the album is The Versions. We are back tomorrow from six. Now it's time to join Lorraine.